Hey y'all, today we're gonna show you how we make Italian bacon chicken tenders in our crock pot, and we're gonna take you along on our trip to the Sonoran Desert Museum. Oh, we're having a whole lot of fun. A big bird, y'all. <laughs> oh wait, I'm stuck. Hi, welcome back to another edition of Cooking Chris's Dishes with the good old boy where we're cooking up dishes straight from RecipesThatCrock.com, my beautiful wife's cooking blog, and we're doing it from our camper kitchen down in Tucson, Arizona for right now. And today we're going to show you how we make our bacon chicken tenders. Italian style, that is. And it's a pretty simple recipe. I had no idea what I was doing. She's like, it's real simple. Even you could do it. So I will. And then I will say, even you can do it. You don't have to do it in Tucson. You could be in Anchorage, Alaska if there's any Crock Posse members up there. If there is, hey, give us a shout out down below and say, hey, I'm from Alaska. I've never met anybody from Alaska. Have you? Alaska. Anyway, we had a good time down there in the Sonoran Desert Museum, and it made us hungry. Why? Because there's lots of birds. Lots of birds. There's quail. There's uh, pigeons and doves. Well, actually, was there pigeons? I don't know. There was doves, and there was hummingbirds everywhere and funny story with that is I was trying to get this slow-mo video of, of a hummingbird in flight and I was trying and evidently that's enough story time for now <laughs> our crock pots tell me it's time to cook but I was trying and trying and trying and then my daughter I just taught her just taught her how to do slow-mo video she walks away she comes right back she goes you mean like this dad and she's got the perfect video of a hummingbird in flight makes me sick i've been trying this stuff for two years and my kid's an expert in five minutes anyway what i am good at is burning myself and making good food let's try to do the latter right now and what you're going to need for this ingredient for our bacon ch italian bacon chicken tenders i can't even tell you what it is but it's going to be good you need chicken you need chicken tenders we got about a pound and a half of chicken tenders here and then bacon there's a pound of bacon and then Italian dressing. Now we use the high-end stuff. This comes from Olive Jardin. Uh, actually, it's just Olive Garden Italian dressing because we really like it on a salad or on our chicken as well. And that's it. So what I want to do is take my Olive Jardin Italian dressing. Get the tab off of there. This stuff. Mmm. That's good stuff. My kitchen, I can do that. And I'm just going to coat my chicken tenders, maybe using about a quarter of it, just enough where it's going to soak down in there, and I'm going to give them a toss, just like that, just to get them all coated. And then when this cooks down in the slow cooker, that Italian dressing is just going to soak right into that meat. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And then once you get them all coated, it's real simple. You take a strip of bacon, and you wrap it around that's two strips of bacon which is fine by me but I'll do what my, my wife said to do it just take a strip of bacon and wrap it around your chicken tender like that and then then remember to take your lid off your crock pot or in this case our ninja and just lay it down in there and then repeat the process until you run out of chicken just like this And then there's my last piece of chicken right there. Wrap that around in a blanket of bacon. And it fits in there just nice. And then you got all this leftover Italian dressing from Olive Jardin. You don't want to waste it, so just drizzle it over the top of your bacon wrapped chicken tenders. Make sure you get some on all of it. It's nice to share. And then you want to cook this on high for 60 to 90 minutes. How will you know when it's done? Uh, when the chicken's like fork tender. Fork tender chicken. And we're going to do that right now. I'm going to wash my hands, fry up the rest of this bacon. And we're going to take you on a trip to the Sonoran Desert Museum in 3, 2, 1.
back at it, buddy. <laughs> So we're reading about the rattlesnake Mikey saw the other day. It says this species has an extensive range. It's responsible for the majority of rattlesnake bites throughout their region. Hmm. Hmm. So the desert museum was cool? Yes. Not really a museum, more no. than a habitat. Yes, that's what I would rename it, is the desert habitat okay. exhibit. Oh, or I guess you could call it, a museum implies to me, I don't know, that was, that I was expecting us to be inside a building most of the day. Yeah. This was more like a zoo, except the focus was more on the habitat than just the animals, which I thought was super cool. We had fun. I think our favorite thing was the hummingbird exhibit. <laughs> there were all kinds of hummingbirds everywhere, all different colors. Miss Ed was owning her photography skills. Yes, we could get up close. It was so fun because all of the um, different desert wildflowers were in bloom and it was just gorgeous because you don't think of all these bright colors when it comes to the desert. And so we were like, we were like, oh, color. It yeah. feels like spring and summer. <laughs> so, um, but yeah. So it was really a lot of fun. It was not what we were expecting. So we spent- It'd be like if you went out into the desert, but we're guaranteed guaranteed to see every animal when you go when you when you go on these hikes and everything you don't know if you're actually going to see something or not so when you right. go to this place they kind of condense it all into one well, area but you're not guaranteed because a lot of the animals like to yeah. hibernate during the day and um, depending on what the weather is like so they're all like some like we didn't get to see any of the tortoise um some of the cats were hiding the bear was not out but we got to see a lot of things so wolf yeah. And an ocelot. Yeah, but I don't think the animals, I mean, the animals definitely were a focus, but more it was about learning about the desert. Like, we learned about how you could distinctly tell between the Sonoran Desert and the Mojave Desert. Um, and that is by if you see the saguaro cactus, you're in the Sonoran Desert. If you see Joshua trees, you're in the Mojave Desert. So, when they get close to each other, that's how you know one from the other. The more you know. Stop. <laughs> so, but we, because we spent so much time there, we actually closed the place down. Yeah, we closed down the museum and that and 
it was kind of kind of expensive it was not just kind of expensive it was really expensive yeah. now i will say in the context of going to museums it's right in the same price range as like going to an aquarium and all that it was like 25 per adult and i think it was 11 for addy right um but when you consider what all we've been seeing with our national parks pass and you know we've been going to state parks and all that kind of stuff that's a big spending item and I have a feeling I don't know this but I have a feeling old Tucson was gonna cost similarly and we didn't even have an option to go to old Tucson because we spent so much time at the desert museum which we also felt like we should I mean we had tons to see there was it was just exhibit after exhibit we're, we're gonna have to save old Tucson for our next trip to this area and I'm telling you right now we will come back mm -hmm. and I mean I'm not ready to do a top five places we visited on the Great Good Adventure because we're not even halfway through the adventure yet no. but I can tell you something it's gonna take a lot to knock Tucson out of the top five <laughs> because we are I, I've been just impressed by everything I'm gonna what we've said we We've said we could very easily come back to this area and spend another two, three weeks to tape all kinds of other things, but we already have the next week or two scheduled, so we have to move on, but that doesn't mean that we won't go back like we did with Dripping Springs, because when we left Dripping Springs the first time, we were like, oh, we have to come back. There are so many things we missed. Yep. And so we did, and we had an absolute blast. And so I think Tucson's on our list of revisit places because there are things that we just couldn't fit into the calendar after. And we were trying to fit, we tried to fit as much as we could. We've actually stayed in Tucson almost as long as we've stayed any place ever. But because I had to travel home, and we had to move and all this kind of stuff to get closer to what we wanted to be next to everything kind of ate up a lot of our time well there's so much to see down here and we have friends i have friends that live down here and you know we've got friends that have visited down here and you know i didn't know anything about tucson but everybody's like you need to go here you need to go to mount lemon you need to go to this canyon you need yes. to go to this place well and it's not just friends not just like friends in real life but also crock posse members have been yep. helping us like somebody told us one of our crock posse members on instagram told us to make sure we saw the desert museum so that's why it made it right. kept getting pushed up on our list because people a lot of people were recommending it to us right. and so um and, that, and this is another reason why we want to come back is because we want to hit all these other spots and while i'm talking chris is going to take i'm going to start recording because this was the place earlier that we were like yeah. where did this come from this is gates pass road and it's something straight out of a cowboy movie is best way i could tell you it's awesome um but we have to come back because i want to go to mount lemon um i want to visit some more of the canyons i want to go back out into the desert uh, i want to see old tucson and get my zasparilla um, but there's just so much to see down here we could have spent a month and still not seen it all so we will come back tucson we love you and we're we're going to come back but for now i think it's time we go home and get some dinner yes we're hungry yeah we're so hungry. we're going to get some dinner right about meow an hour has passed and our chicken has been cooked let's take a look at it it smells really good in here that smell of that italian dressing that's been cooking for the last hour is well it's been hard not to go in there and sneak a peek as well as eat some so let's pull it out now when you look on here the chicken is tender and ready to go the bacon is done but it's not browned up a lot of people including myself would rather have this a little bit more browned up so i'm going to pull these out as i'm doing just now put them on the plate to get them out of the way oh my gosh it smells so good my mouth is a watering my fingers are burning that plate's hot what i want to do is take these guys out of my slow cooker in this case our ninja and I want to drain this liquid out. I don't know, maybe there's something you could do it if you want to. Me, I'm just going to take the towel. I got a bowl in my sink where it will allow me to get rid of that without dumping it down the drain. 
don't dump stuff like that down the drain. It's it's not good for your your tanks. You're welcome. And then I want to set this on saute feature. How do I set this on saute feature? Stovetop. Yeah. Which on here is stovetop. And I'm going to let this get hot, just like you would a skillet. If you don't have something like that, if you don't have a feature, you can always do this on a skillet. If we were outside and I had the grill going, I could do it on the grill. But what I want to do is I want to crisp up my bacon kind of brown it up give it that dark color but while I'm here and I can because it's my kitchen you could eat it just like it is I'm gonna give it a little taste test while I'm waiting for that to come up to temperature oh my gosh That's ridiculously good. And easy. Hmm? And easy. Mm hmm. Three ingredients, and that's good to go. That's already starting to sizzle down there, which is a good thing. But I'm going to put this back in my slow cooker and let that bacon crisp up at the same time. So then you'll have your Italian flavor, you'll have that smoky flavor from the bacon, but then you'll also have it crisped up, which will give it a little bit of a crunch as well. Texture's not a bad thing. Like I said, it's good the way it is, but that bacon's a little soft, just because it's been cooking in a liquid, so it's not gonna, it's not gonna crisp up, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna toss them in there like that, I'm gonna let them crisp up on one side, then I'm gonna flip them over and do it. Of course, you're gonna see it just like this. And the bacon has now been browned up. But now we're going to do a plot twist. Because we were discussing as we were browning up the bacon. That that would be really good with some cheese on it. And we just happen to have some cheese right here. My pretty lady giving me some Havarti mm -hmm. cheese. They can use mozzarella. They you can use mozzarella, Havarti, um, cheddar, whatever you want. We like the Havarti because it's really creamy when it melts down. So while that is still hot... And the bacon is browning on the bottom. I'm going to take four slices of Havarti and put on the top, just like that. And I'm going to, top, I'm going to pop a lid on it and melt that cheese down. And then, I promise, I promise, we'll, we, will, we will stop the suspense and we will eat this in three, two, one. Ta-da! The cheese is melted. It's still sizzling on there from the bacon in the bottom. But that's okay, we like it sizzling. Oh my gosh, oops, that one fell apart. This smells so good. And, well, I'm just going to say it, y'all. My wife was right. Cheese is going to be perfect on this. It melted down. Only took about, what, a minute to melt that cheese down? Mm -hmm. And, oh my goodness. My mouth is watering so bad right now. Hey, look, there's the one that I started eating off of. I'll leave that there. This is what it looks like all pretty. Here, let me come up to you here. Look at them. Look at them. Got that melty cheese over it. You know what? I bet you could take some marinara sauce and even that, pour that over the top of it. You just comp keep complicating turn my, my recipe. Turn my beans down. Got some green beans behind me that are going to go good with this. But I've got to test this out. Y'all know it ain't good unless I go, mmm, right? There's a piece of bacon in there. I'll gladly take with that. We'll set that to the side. Get my handy dandy fork. And then come up here and show you. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. It's so hot. Oh, it's hot. It's hot. Got me a piece there with some bacon on it. Some cheese. It's going to be hot. If you couldn't tell. You want this bite? Here, you can have this bite. Nah, I better have it myself. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. That's hot. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm.
Oh, no, no, no. So the bacon crisped up after cooking down around that chicken. You drain it, kick it on high, crisp up the bacon, gives it a little crispy flavor. It's crunchy. The chicken's chewy, but not like not like leather chewy, but you know, it's chicken breast, but it's chicken breast tender. But then you put that cheese on top of it, and it just gives it another layer of love, if you know what I mean. You can taste the Italian dressing in it. It's delicious, it's easy. It's completely low carb, and it is so good. Y'all gotta try this one. Uh, this one will not let you down. If you like chicken and you like bacon, why are you waiting? Ooh, that should be a new motto. I should, <laughs> I should put that on a t-shirt. And I should put this in my belly. So I will say this. We thank you guys for watching another edition of Cooking Chris's Dishes. If you like what you saw, give us one of these down below. If you haven't become a member of the Croc Posse, I don't know what you're waiting on. All you got to do is click subscribe and you're a member of the Croc Posse. And whatever you do, laugh often. Eat good food. And speak life. Love y'all. Bye. Oh, I'm hot.